18 people are shot and killed in South Africa every day. That's according to the latest data by Gun Free South Africa. It is a significant drop from the 34 people a day in the year 2000 before the Firearms Control Act of that year was implemented. According to the 2009 mortuary report, homicide incidences have dropped from 44% in 2005 to 38.5% in 2009. This study also revealed that young men between the ages of 15 and 29 years are the most vulnerable to being murdered. Gun ownership in South Africa again came to light last year following the death of Bafana Bafana Captain Senzo Miyiwa with the Cabinet approving amendments to firearm control legislation in a bid to clamp down the spread of firearms in the country. However, more still needs to be done to make South Africa much safer. Now today we're joined by Gun Free South Africa, Adele Kirsten, who is the Director of Advocacy and Lobbying. A very good morning to you, Adele. Thank Hello. you for joining us. Good morning, Eben. Thank you for having us. The numbers, the numbers I've just looked at, on face value, it's, it's still scary, but it seems there's a big improvement. Well, and that's the good news. Uh, and one of the other things that the data shows is when you look at other weapons that are used uh, in crime and what we call in injury-related incidents like knives uh, or blunt instruments, you don't see the same reduction. So as a researcher or a scientist, the question you have to then ask yourself is what happened over this period from 1990 to 2009? What change happened to cause this fairly dramatic reduction? We're talking almost 50% 50, mm. 50 reduction in gun deaths in South Africa over a 10-year period. Uh, and the single most important intervention was the introduction of stronger gun laws. Where do all the other guns still come from? It seems as we have amnesties, we, we uh, get people that uh, hand in weapons and so forth, but it seems as if we still have a lot of unlicensed firearms in our communities. How, where do they come from and how do we deal with that? Okay. Loss and theft, uh, I think, is one of the biggest contributors uh, to the movement of illegal guns. And the research shows that there really are three main sources. The one is cross-border trade, uh, but evidence seems to suggest that that's decreased significantly in the last 20 years. Certainly was prominent in the sort of political transition years. Uh, loss and theft, is the biggest contributor to illegal guns is loss and theft from police, from civilians, and from your private security industry. And so that's where one of the problems lie. But I think what's really important for people to understand is that most illegal guns were legal at some point. Uh, so again, strategies that have shown to work both here and elsewhere in the world, you have to mop up the illegal pool. You have to get rid of them. They're out there. You can't control them. And in fact, you don't know how many there are. Mm. But the other is you have to ask the question, where are they coming from? And that's where you have to control. So you have to decrease the opportunity for movement from the legal pool into the illegal pool. And our, our amendments to our existing act, which is going to come before Parliament in the next couple of months, is trying to do exactly that. And one of the suggested amendments is to mark weapons. Just tell us a little bit more about these amendments that are going before Parliament uh, to the, fire, the firearm control legislation. OK, there are lots of amendments. I'm just going to concentrate on what Gun Free South Africa sees as some of the key ones. The one, and I think perhaps the most significant, is an acknowledgement that SAPS has to get their own house in order. So you're seeing a whole slew of amendments which really increase uh, accountability mechanisms and control mechanisms over SAPS stocks. So just to give you one example, uh, one of the amendments is that the National Commissioner is required to report quarterly to the Minister of Police on loss and theft of police guns. Um, so, so much tighter control. Also, um, the designated firearms officer, the suggestion is that at every police station you have a DFO. Other, other um, uh, amendments are limiting access to semi-automatics. So, for example, dedicated sports shooters, yeah. limiting that to two. 
that's good because we know access to guns is not just about crime, it's about risk to people in the home and it increases risk for loss and theft. Well, I thank you for joining us. The numbers certainly look a little bit better, and if it is the legal framework that's helping us, then we should oh. certainly push for that. Thank you yeah. for joining us today. That's Adele Kirsten, who's the Director of Advocacy and Lobbying uh, for Gun-Free South Africa. Yeah.